You ready? Here we go. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Homebrewers Alley. This weekend we're going to be brewing a batch of IPA, and we're doing an extract brew. Uh, there's different types of brewing that you can do. You can brew the, from the can, which are normally the kits that has everything in it that you need. Uh, you can do extract brewing like we're doing this weekend, uh, or you can do an all-grain method. Uh, all-grain, uh, a little bit more labor-intensive, um, but you have a little bit more control over your finished product. Uh, however, extract will work out just fine for this as well. Uh, there's a lot of good brews that are made by home brewers that are done simply by doing an extract. So this weekend we're going to be covering the process step by step. And first we're just going to start off and talk a little bit about some of the equipment and ingredients that you might need for brewing this type of batch. One of the first things that you're going to need is going to be, of course, a pot to boil it in. Now if you're doing a smaller batch, uh, you can do it right on the stove and use like one of the big canning pots. Um, it really depends on what size of the batch you're making. For this particular batch we're doing five gallons, so you want to have something that's large enough to not only hold uh, all of the gallons of water, um, but also to prevent any, in case there's a boil over, you want there to be enough room for the wort to expand as it boils. Uh, now this pot here, you don't have to go this exact route, this includes a temperature gauge, uh, has a spout on the front, and it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, and this also holds up to 13 gallons, which gives there's plenty of room uh, in case there's a boil over uh, or if you want to do a 10 gallon batch, etc. But you can find whatever works for you. It depends on how much uh, that you want to invest in this particular hobby. Um, this is something else that, you, of course, you're going to need. This is, let me see, hold that up there, Iota 4, uh, which is a um, sanitation. Um, cleaning agent which will help sanitize uh, all of the equipment that you'll be using. You want some sort of paddle uh, to stir with. Plastic works just fine. You can use wood as well, metal, although just remember the metal is going to conduct the heat a lot more so I would suggest probably either plastic or wood. Now while this particular uh, boiling pot does have a temperature gauge on it, um, because I'm only doing a five gallon batch, uh, the temperature gauge doesn't always read quite right because the water level isn't high enough. Um, so as a backup, I also use one of these, which is just a little temperature gauge that you would use in your kitchen for meats. You can pick these up at Walmart or something like that for probably a couple bucks. You will also need a hydrometer. Uh, to test what your starting gravity is and your ending gravity, and we'll talk about gravities and whatnot uh, a little bit further on throughout the episode. Uh, but this basically is what this looks like. I don't know if you can see it there. It also looks like it needs to be cleaned a little bit, but um, we'll also do that before we use it this weekend. Um, but anyway, that this is a necessity that you will need for brewing a batch of extract beer uh, or all grain if you're doing all grain. Uh, there's a pitcher. I use this for when I'm splarging the grains, and again, that will be covered in more detail, but it's always helpful to have a pitcher uh, for pouring the water. And then also some sort of colander or screen that you can sparge the grains with, and you'll see how we'll use this a little bit later on. Finally, uh, once you've finished making your beer, or actually gotten the wort ready, uh, you're going to need a place for it to ferment for a couple of weeks. Uh, so you get an ale pail. The beer will go in here uh, and then it will be sealed with a lid and finished off with an airlock. And again, you will see how all this works uh, coming up. Also, for cooling off your wort uh, before you add your yeast, uh, the, for this particular 
recipe, you want your wort to be at about 70 degrees before you pitch your yeast. Um, so you need to find a way to cool it down. There's different ways that you can do that. Uh, I know some guys take the actual whole bucket with the wort in it and um, they set it in a bathtub with ice cubes. Um, or you can also use a chiller coil. It's just a copper coil uh, that's hooked up to your garden hose. You'll run the garden hose through it, uh, and which will cool this down. And then this tube runs the water out into your yard or into your bathtub, however you, you have it set up. Um, and it, the, the copper coils way down, and you will be plunging this into your bucket of hot water. Um, which will bring the temperature down much quicker than, is, than if you sat it on ice or, or were just sitting and waiting for it. Also, uh, with the, the boiling pot, I should mention, with something this big, you're not going to want to use this on your stove. Um, so I use a propane burner, uh, which uh, can support something this large.